All right. So before I get into what Lucas Taylor brings to Syracuse, just a quick little bio about him. He is a shooting guard from Georgia State. He's going to be a senior with one year of eligibility. So this is going to be his only year with Syracuse. Syracuse had been pursuing Lucas Taylor for at least the last few weeks that we know of when there was public interest. It started with Naheem McLeod posting on his Instagram story a picture of Lucas Taylor and then Lucas Taylor reposting it himself. Lo and behold, it's then reported that Lucas Taylor and Syracuse have made contact and that there's interest in working out a visit. Yesterday, Lucas Taylor visits and commits on the very same day to Syracuse. Lucas Taylor is a four-star transfer on 24-7 sports. I believe he's top 200 overall in the portal. On three, is much lower on him, though. He's only a three-star there. But if you look at the four transfers that Syracuse basketball has brought in this offseason, and by the way, they still have two more open scholarships remaining. But if you look at the four players they have brought in, all of them are rated four stars on at least one recruiting service meaning there's a ton of them out there. All of them have a four-star rating somewhere. So that's pretty good. It's not it's not the most elite transfer portal class, but believe if you look on any recruiting service, you're going to find that they're top 25 in their transfer class basically everywhere. So that's good. And Lucas Taylor, four stars on 24-7 sports. So obviously they're pretty high on him. And as I mentioned, the Orange, they still have two open scholarships remaining, so that means they have 11 of 13 roster spots filled. They might not fill all of them, but having 11 of 13 is pretty good at this stage of the game. Roster is nearly complete, but not yet. So now, what does Lucas Taylor bring to Syracuse basketball? I came up with five things. Number one, a backup shooting guard With upside? Is there upside with Lucas Taylor? Let me explain. Last year, Lucas Taylor averaged 15 points per game at Georgia State. He really blossomed. Obviously, playing at Georgia State, it's lesser competition, but he led his team in scoring and was basically their best player. But he played the first two years at Wake Forest where he only averaged about one point a game in his career there, which is not very good, obviously. He was more of a role player. Is there upside? I don't know. You be the judge on that one. I'd like to think, as I've said with Lucas Taylor before, if you can split the difference, right? One point per game plus 15 points per game. Divide the two. You get eight points per game. If next year Lucas Taylor averages eight points per game, you're pretty happy. From a backup shooting guard who might have a little bit of upside given that he definitely improved this year. So that's my number one takeaway when it comes to Lucas Taylor and what he brings to Syracuse. Number two, insurance on Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore could be really valuable next season. He could be really good. He has been marketed, hyped up, whatever you want to call it, as one of the best three-point shooters in high school. And he's coming to Syracuse, and it's nice. But if you look on any recruiting service, some of them are a little higher, some of them are a little lower, but really the general overview of him is that he is a four-star recruit for sure, but he's more on the lower end of it. And lower-end four-star recruits typically, not saying this is going to apply to Elijah Moore, but typically don't have crazy freshman seasons. Not hating on Elijah Moore, but that's just the reality of players that are ranked in his range. They don't all blossom right away. It takes time. Elijah Moore could be the outlier because of his three-point shooting ability, but he also might not be. And so you get in Lucas Taylor, who is more proven, As insurance, think about why we even buy insurance to begin with. We don't buy it because it's guaranteed to happen, right? You get car insurance. There's no guarantee that anything's going to happen to your car. But what if something happens to your car? That's why you have insurance on it, right? So could Elijah Moore be great next season? Yeah, and that would basically mean that Lucas Taylor is obsolete. 
But if he's not, if he's not great, Syracuse does have that fallback option in Lucas Taylor, who could be a fine option as a backup shooting guard for this team next season. So that's number two. He brings insurance on Elijah Moore. Number three, Lucas Taylor is a shooting guard, but I believe he could be used at the three as well, given that he is six foot five. So he would be more of a small ball three. That just provides more depth on the wing. Prior to the move, Syracuse had three forwards on its roster. All very talented. Chris Bell, Jair Davis, Donnie Freeman. I don't think anyone's going to complain about that trio. That's pretty good. I've talked about several times how I think Syracuse has an elite front court, one of the better ones in the country, one certainly one of the best in the ACC. But it is a tad thin, a tad thin, because you only got three, and you know, God forbid something happens. You don't, you don't wish injury upon anyone or – dare I say, underperformance as well could happen. It happens. You never really know, right? It's sports. You just felt that they probably needed someone else on the wing. It didn't have to be direct. You could move Chance Westry over to the wing, but he can also play the one and the two. Getting a guy like Lucas Taylor, who can be a small ball, small forward, gives you more depth. There you go. So if Syracuse wants to go small, They could run out a lineup with, say, Jake Juan Carlos, J.J. Starling, Lucas Taylor, Donnie Freeman, Jair Davis, however you want to. There's a ton of different lineup combinations that you can make. But the point is, is that you get more depth on the wing. So that's number three. To recap the first three for you so far in terms of takeaways from this move, Lucas Taylor is a can bring you a backup shooting guard, maybe with a little bit of upside. Number two is insurance on Elijah Moore. And number three, as I mentioned, depth on the wing. Number four, you guys have seen his three-point percentages by now. I've talked about him several times already on this podcast. You've seen his numbers. I posted it. He brings some shooting. Lucas Taylor last season at Georgia State in high volume shot 35% from three. That's pretty good. At Wake Forest the year before, he only took 23s in 12 games, but he was 40%. I know it's not a big sample, but I'd rather you be 40% on a small sample than 10% on a small sample. There's that. Last season, on deep range three-pointers at Georgia State, what are deep range threes? I've said this stat a couple of times, but in in case you need a refresher and these podcasts, whenever someone is new to Syracuse, tends to bring in new viewers. So welcome, everyone. Deep range threes are three pointers that are more than 25 feet away from the rim. So they're long. Well, Lucas Taylor, he made 64 threes last season. 26 of them we're from 25 plus feet. So that's about half, close to half, maybe 40-ish percent. He's got some range and he made 35% overall. So he brings some shooting to a team that needed some shooting. How many players in the Syracuse roster right now are good shooters? Chris Bell, we know, but who else? The point is is that they needed more shooting. And they sort of got it with Lucas Taylor. I don't think it's the solution to everything, but 35% last season is solid. If you were to do that next year for Syracuse, I think we would all be very happy. So that's number four. He brings a little bit of shooting. And number five, clarity. Clarity. I spoke about it yesterday. Would it have been the end of the world if Lucas Taylor didn't commit to Syracuse? No. Would not have been the end of the world. But come on. It's now June 5th. Syracuse basketball's last transfer portal commit was Jake Juan Carlos. That was on April 24th. So about six weeks ago. It's a long time to go without getting someone 
And I think most of us assumed that they were not done. All the reports indicated they were not done adding to their roster. They were sitting on 10 scholarships for six weeks. We were just waiting. Who are they going to fill it with? I'm not expecting them to fill all 13, but you knew they weren't going to just end with 10. Finally, they got someone that fills another spot. Kind of fills a need. More depth on the wing, a backup shooting guard, insurance on Elijah Moore, but it's more clarity. They get someone in the boat, and now they can move on to another piece. I don't think the roster is done. Notice how in the five things that I said, because that's number five, I did not say I believe the roster is done now that they got Lucas Taylor. There is still more that they have to bring. But just to recap before I get to your comments, Lucas Taylor brings five things to Syracuse basketball for next season. Number one, he is a backup shooting guard with upside. Number two, he's definitely insurance on Elijah Moore. Number three, he gives me more depth on the wing. You can play him as a small ball, small forward if you want. Number four, he brings the team a little bit of shooting for a team that really did need shooting. And number five, clarity. I think we all wanted Syracuse basketball to land someone. We knew that they weren't just done with their roster at 10. Finally, after over a month of waiting, they get Lucas Taylor. So it's good to get him in the boat. Now coming up, as I just mentioned, we're going to get to your comments and what you guys think about Lucas Taylor heading to Syracuse. <laughs> 